Okay, today I'm gonna to help those of you who have lost the full extension and flexion range overhead, so up in this position here. Now this might be because you've had shoulder surgery before, like a reconstruction, or maybe you had frozen shoulder, or even simple just a shoulder injury, and that last sort of 10, 15 degrees, you're lacking strength. Now this is usually coupled with range, so there might be stiffness in there as well. Not impingement pain, but stiffness in there because you've lost some range. So we're gonna work on three things that help you with your flexion, help with your extension, and there's also a bit of abduction one there with a bit of rotation, which is a nice one to add into while you're doing these two things. So the first one we're gonna go for is the flexion in an overhead position. Now, remember, flexion is actually that way. When you're coming up here, it's flexions that way, all right? So going from there to there. So it's the last sort of you know, 10, 15 degrees. If you're stuck at sort of 160, 170, and you wanna get to 180, or you wanna get beyond, maybe your shoulders are, you know, your other shoulder's really mobile, and this one's lost 10 degrees, this is what we're aim for. Now, we do this in a prone position. So what I would use is something like a kettlebell, or you could simply use a, you know, a box, or something like that that's got a little bit of height. And what you're aiming for is to that height there be just almost a bit more than what you're capable of. So if you're, if I take that away for a second, if you go up and say, we'll start at about 135 degrees, okay? So not 180, 135 degrees. If you go in that position there and you go down in this position and try and raise your arm, you go as high as you can and you look at it, okay, that point there, that's at least what you want the block or the bell to be because you want to go over that. You know, especially if you look at your other side and it's way up here, okay, you go, right, I've only got this so much, so I want at least that to start with. So if I go and I say 135 degree point there, what I'm gonna do is gonna go over the bell in reps. So i will be over and back and that'll be one. Now if you're lifted up, of course you're gonna lift your shoulder higher. So this is, I'm just showing you now so I can see what I'm doing. But over and back is one rep, nice and slow. When you go down, what you've got to try and do, and you can look at it, but you can cheat by looking at it if you like, but you've got to keep your body down. You've got to raise your arm over and back. Now that position there, when you've lost a bit of range, you'll feel that through your shoulder. Now it can't be a real sharp pain. It can't be sort of like a real bad ache that's increasing. It can just be the tightest. So not a, if you've had impingement pain before, it's not that, you're not allowed that. It's just the tightness and probably a bit of weakness and fatigue. If you're getting fatigued in there, that's okay. If it goes away after, that's okay. Because what we're aiming for is to look at that bell, clear the bell, and do 10 reps of that. Okay, so you're gonna sort of like a 135, 130 degree position, and you're just doing repetitions over and back. What that's working on is your flexion strength in that 135 degrees. So it's sort of that movement there. Now, as you get better and that starts getting easier as the days go on, you need to increase this height so you're going over higher to try and match the other side. All you're trying to do is match the other side. Once you've done that one, then you move to a 180 degree position, okay? So fully over here. Remember, don't cheat yourself by coming up and going, oh, hey, look at me. You've got to come down. Sometimes it's hard to look at and see, okay, where is that bell? Usually you'll feel it, so if you hit it, you go, oh, okay, I've got to get over it. And what you can do is tend to slide over it, but I really want you to try and clear it and clear it like that without compensating through your back. So just make sure, if you feel like you're arching your lower back, arching your thoracic, just keep your core on, a little bit of a posterior pelvic tilt, bit of glutes to help you out. Keep that on to take the pressure off your mid-back, and over and back you go for reps, okay? Now I'd be aiming for just 10, so one and back is 10. You may be maybe two or three sets in each position for that. Of course, when you rest, compare it to the other side to show you where you're at, so you know, you know if you're progressing or not, but also how high you need to go for the next time, and to sort of give you an idea of what you're supposed to be doing, because sometimes you can lose a bit of that neuromuscular programming up here when you've, when you've lost your strength, so your good arm is gonna tell you, okay, this is how you gotta do it, and you try and copy, simple stuff. So that's for your flexion overhead, right? What you can do in that position, if you if you're um, lost a little bit of the abduction part through range, and you're a little bit tied to rotation. Some people who have lost, like especially the surgical shoulders, who have lost that full range there, tend to have a little bit of hand behind the back tightness as well, because they have some capsular tightness in there, especially the frozen shoulder people. So if you're one of those people where your problem shoulder has lost internal range like your other, and not like the other one, so the other one's fine, you go, 
yeah, actually yeah, that's lost some range. You'll also may notice it here, so if you've got, you might have lost some external range of movement there and the other one's absolutely fine. So what you do, while you're doing that position, you've done your 130s and your 180s, is put this bell starting maybe about zero, okay? Zero, 90 degrees out that way, okay? Then you're gonna move that bell up as you go. You're gonna go through abduction instead of just doing this flexion one. So what I want you to start off with is you go on your back, and this will help you with your hand behind your back stretch. You go on your back and try and lift it up. And then as you go out, rotate. You rotate around the bell at 90 degrees, clear it, and then lift up. Now, okay, when people have range of movements, usually problems, usually the range gets worse and worse and worse as you go to 180. So you notice with that bell, is okay, that was the easiest part, and then I sort of can drift off. Because if I haven't got the range there, then I start down here. As I get better, almost like a clock, I'm going to move that bell. Let's go to 120. So you go on the back, round, rotate over, clear the bell, have a look, and go as high as you can at the top, come back, clear the bell, hand behind your back, and rest. And then as you get better, you might do a few reps in that position, up to 135 degrees, start again, lift, rotate, up, over, and high. And of course, when you're getting really good at this, and it's probably gonna coincide with the fact that you can actually do this movement in flexion, as you then go the full range, we call this a hand behind your back skydive, don't ask me why. This one here, up, rotate. You should be clearing it high all the way now, all the way up, and into there, okay? And then back, and rotate through. And this is really gonna help your sort of dynamic range through your shoulder, through abduction and rotation. It's going to work really well for those people who've lost that range over here. Now, that's your flexion and your abduction, but what about your extension? So remember, extension strength, when you're up here, extension strength is pulling forward. So that is extension, right? We're going to work on the upper range, and this is really important for those who are working with hands overhead, okay? Also the overhead athletes, so all the tennis players and racket sport players, volleyball, throwing balls, cricket, that sort of thing. When you're up high and you've lost that strength, this is what I want you to work on. Grab your trusty power band. Start off with, say, a mini power line band like that so it's not too heavy. Attach it down low, not too low, but lower than your shoulder. And I do this in a kneeling position, okay? Now I'll show you with my right shoulder here. What you're going to aim for is putting that band forward Okay, it's that tension there, will, the amount of stretch here, how far you are will determine how strong you are. Okay, so that point there, that's where you start. What you're gonna aim for is to go into flexion as far as you can go. The good thing about this is it'll give you a bit of a stretch through here, and then pull forward into extension. All right, so back, lovely thing about this is a bit of a stretch. Make sure your sort of core's on, you're not into an anterior tilt, get into your neutral, Far back as you can, pull forward. What I want you to try and avoid, and it's very tempting, is when you go back, people tend to sort of start losing range here, and to get the hand, they start bending the elbow. So don't fall into that trap thinking that you're getting more flexion, uh, more extension range. So what I want you to aim for is back here. To get that, keep your elbow straight as possible, and then you're pulling through from here into the extension there, all right? So back, as far into flexion as you can, glutes on, core on, right back and through. Again, same sort of rules apply. Don't go into the impingement pain. Okay, you've got impingement pain, stay away from it. If it's just a stretch, like a tightness issue and a bit of fatigue, that's okay. Um, and try and aim for your same sort of rep range, maybe a 10, maybe 12, at least eight with that. And try and get to you know, at least two sets, maybe going three, probably four is too much. And in between those, switch to the other side. So, see if you can work on those three things. If you've got problems overhead, give that a crack. We'll see you next time.